afternoon, everybody. Um, today I'm recording this uh, video here. And it actually was supposed to go out about maybe uh, on Friday. Most of you know that normally on Friday evenings I like to that's when I want to I want to get in a routine of recording on Friday evenings, but I'm not really liking that night. But that's when I was supposed to do this video. But I didn't do it. Because it's a very 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 heavy subject. There's going to be some heavy heavy things that'll be said here. Things that are dangerous to say. But also things that need to be said. And uh, it won't be the first time where I've had to, uh, you know, say such serious things that could change the situation for Haitian people and, and black people all over the world, in Africa, South America, wherever they may be in the United States. That's the type of talk this is. So the question we have is why Jovenel Moise won't resign? Why the president of Haiti will not resign? There are 20, there have been 22 deaths. 22 people have died in the past four going on five weeks of pay luck. Basically, it's like a nationwide protest. No one's in school. Uh, no government buildings operating. No government functions are going on. Um, protests almost every day. Streets are barricaded. Um, businesses have been burned. Every sector of national life has called for the president's resignation. Um, you know, even the international press is in Haiti. They're writing about it. There's protests going on in other countries, in other uh, places, in Puerto Rico, Canada, France, D.C., New York, Miami, all calling for the president to resign. You know? But he still won't resign and and it probably would occur to you guys it, you probably would think oh well that's just because he's a Haitian politician that's how Haitian politicians are you know I, I tell you guys all the time that everybody's playing by the Duvalier playbook you know people thinking things were nice under Duvalier it wasn't it wasn't and we're still feeling the effects of it because every president that comes into power they think they can stay in power using the Duvalier playbook they destroy the legislature they don't hold elections and they think they could become the next dictator the next president for life and we end up exactly where we are here is where we were with Martelli um, we didn't. That didn't really happen with Pueval as much, but it was where we were with uh, Aristide. Only the blonde didn't like Aristide, but that's for another day to talk about, and and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, for Jovenel Moise to resign, that would look too much like right. It would be the right thing to do, and it would make sense given that millions are in the street protesting against him. And I know it's easy to think that, you know, oh, it's just because he's a Haitian politician. But understand, see, this is where, where we start to get, get into it. It's not by his own will that he's able to stay in power. And I think most of us know that it is through international community support. And it was the same thing for Duval. That's what I really want to, next time I get in a debate with people trying to argue about Duval, I can actually, uh, I want to ask them basically the simple question. If it wasn't for the U.S., would he have made it, uh, stayed in power as long as he did? And 
they'll say, and and the truth would be no. You know, he was doing the the bidding of the imperial powers. That's what allowed that dictatorship to lo- last so long, and that's what's allowing Jovenel Moise to continue to remain in office. Because remember, he was Mawon. He was he's been missing, and it wasn't until the Miami Herald put out uh, its editorial piece about him being missing, and everybody was like, "Yo!" And I even wrote a piece. He hadn't stepped foot in the National Palace for like three weeks that he started showing his face. So obviously, somebody's putting a battery in his back. Somebody's encouraging him to go out there and put his face forward. Somebody's encouraging him to hold power despite the country being torn apart, lives being lost, businesses being burned, kids not going to school. Somebody's keeping that battery in his back. And that's what we're going to discuss today. You know, and and. The international community is is clear. And when I talk about the international community, I'm talking about the U.S. ambassador in Haiti, the United Nations, EU ambassador. It's clear they're not going to help. And, and But I think we all understand at this point that they are the hand. They are the invisible hand in this picture. It's, it's, it's no... It's no mystery to anyone at this point in time. Anybody who is a mystery uh, to, they're lying to themselves, themselves. You know, but, and, 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 but even, but even if they were to lie to themselves, you would kind of understand because it's like, well, we see how the U.S. position against Venezuela or, 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 uh, the brother in Syria, what's his name? I I can't. It, it escapes me at the moment. But the 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 head of state in Syria, who gassed his own people. You see the way the U.S. reacts towards those types of individuals for crimes they claim. But these are things that are going on in Haiti. Rampant corruption against the people, police are suppressing, oppressing, repressing the people that are protesting. They're using gas that I feel, and it's actually been reported. I've reported it back in 2013 and 2015, that the gas that the Haitian police are using, for some reason, it has a little bit more sting than what they use in other countries. I think in, in uh, last week there was a discussion about maybe it's expired because they see the dates on the tear gas canisters are like supposed to be expiring like, you know, the first or second of November and they're using it now in October. But it, it's it's having it's a very strong effect. You know, so we're they're they're repressing protests, freedom of speech. There's journalists being shot in Haiti. There's widespread corruption. There's all of this in the international community. Uh, U.S. ambassador is still there. There's not the same. You don't see the same energy that they have for Maduro for what the Haitian president is doing. You don't see that. And, and, the, and you can't count on the news media either. Washington Post, New York Times. You cannot count on them. My, even Miami Herald. Hate to say it. You know, peace to uh, the sister Jacqueline Charles. She's doing her thing, but you can't really take what what any of them actually say as the definite truth because they're gonna leave stuff out. And right now, they're beginning to slick shade the 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 opposition. They're beginning to slick shade the protest, talking about the people are protesting to an uncertain future. Like, what are you talking about? Like uncertain future, no. The people know what they're protesting for. Whether they actually get that future, 
you know, that's in the air. That's that's up in the air because there's a lot of forces at play. But the Haitian people know what they're protesting for, and they've been protesting it for 200 plus years. So the international media is throwing that type of slick shade. What else did they say? They said something about uh, uh, they they were talking about they mentioned all the corruption that the president is involved in. But they don't want to mention the massacres that have happened that is that clearly it's the government involvement. The, the, The U.N. even admitted it. They they not going to mention that. Yeah, I, I saw. I didn't see that in the Washington Post, uh, in an article they put out this morning. For them, they're gonna try to. They're they're pushing their own agenda as well, their own liberal agenda. You know, so so that that that's what that's what's going on with that. So, so what I mean to say is that. The help's not going to come. Look, look, look what the U.N. just did. They brought the same old the same old white lady that was over many juice, you know, that's Manus to replace for the U.N. mission in Haiti. She she they, they she's she's coming back. You know, the U.N. is having financial problems right now because the U.S. ain't giving them the U.S. is trying to uh, essentially. um uh, use the power of a dollar to control the United Nations. So they're bringing that lady Lima back, as if she, as if she, you know, everything's been great under her, as if, as if things are on the up. So the international community is not going to help. In fact, they're going to do the opposite. They're going to try to keep him there. They want to keep him there. They they are that battery in his back. They are that battery in Jovenel Moe's back. But there's a little bit more to this story. Now, see, what I'm about to tell you guys is something very, 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 very heavy. You know, and this is the uh, this is the type of information that a lot of people not going to want me to be out here saying you know I told you guys uh, earlier I had the video about humanitarian aid how how that is a scam how they are pulling the wool over our eyes I told you guys the truth about that you know that one it's kind of it's kind of it's not really news anymore. I think we all kind of understand it after what happened with the earthquake and the world's beginning to understand that humanitarian aid is not best, but I think I I did a really good job just to actually show that not only is it not helpful, but it's also detrimental. I think that's that's the new point that I I brought to that. And then I had a second thing I where where I basically just showed how foreign direct investment is not vital for developing an economy. In fact, it's detrimental to developing an economy. Like, to work towards trying to attract foreign investment often works to the detriment of the local population than to their uh, benefit. But yet, you'll hear every Haitian politician uh, try to say that's the way we need to go you know, the U.S. putting out resolutions or bills to that effect that mention it quite clearly. Uh, they'll go out there and the U.S. ambassador and the U.N. ambassador, they'll say, well, we need the protest to stop so we can attract foreign investment. When that has nothing to do with growing and developing our economy, foreign direct investment, in fact, does the opposite. It could hurt your economy. So now what I've been describing are chains. These are these are the chains. Like imagine we're a slave. Those are two chains that are holding us down that 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 these folks got us uh, enslaved with. I might tell you all a third chain. 
that they have us with. And this is in regards to the NGO state. That is the non-governmental organization state that's going on in Haiti. And it's not just in Haiti, but in Africa and around the world. Because see, this whole thing, this whole NGO situation, it's made to look innocent. It's made to look benevolent. But it's not. I'm about to give you guys a figure right here that's going to blow your minds. The loss in tax revenue for supporting the NGO state in Haiti is $600 million per year. $600 million, U.S. dollars per year. And that's actually... Uh, conversion from Haitian goods so it, it it could possibly be a billion 1.2 billion per year double that you know not because because when the figure was made it the the dollar sign the 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 exchange rate for the good to the US dollar was a lot different than what it's at now but I'm just going even off of the lower end, 600 million. That's ridiculous because Haiti's tax revenue is only 325 million per year. When we had Petro Caribe, that was another 650 million per year. So the amount of money that we're losing in tax revenue is just about equal to what we were getting in loans from the Petro Caribe deal. You see, these these ambassadors that we know are keeping Jovenel Moise in power, are keeping the system that has people crying out in place, are not in Haiti in some kind of a vacuum. They're not just in the country by themselves. There's a whole apparatus that they are there to serve and protect. When you see the new Haitian chief of police come in and the first person he goes and sits down with is the U.S. ambassador. It's because the Haitian police have become a basically private security service for the NGO state, for the foreigners that are in Haiti. Our brother Hill that that I did a, a, a we had a talk, we had a discussion on with. Uh, about you know maybe the week before last he was in, in one of his videos he was talking about how when he came after the earthquake to help and uh, some Haitian police came over they was harassing them they was talking to them like they were dogs and then once he showed them that hey first of all he speaks English quite well and he's a U.S. military man their whole demeanor changed they, they started treating them with a little bit of respect. And I could show you instances over and over where the Haitian police show that they're not there to protect Haitian citizens, but they're there to protect the foreign citizens. For example, case in point, just three weeks ago, they arrest a guy. They arrest a guy. He has, he has, a, he has a girl captive. He has a girl captive. He he uh, kidnapped her. He had a bunch of fake police uniforms and he had a bunch of guns and cell phones and license plates. The police, you know, arrested him and caught him and, and they freed the girl. Great news story. Woo, woo, woo. But come to find out, this brother was the one who shot a Colombian citizen a uh, week, uh, not even a week prior. It probably was like five days prior near the airport. The Colombian dude, he was on a motorcycle. He had to catch a motorcycle, was holding his luggage and stuff. And Cash just came up, popped him, and took his luggage and, and, and stuff while he was trying to get get to the airport. That's what that, So they caught that guy who killed the Colombian citizen. And, it, and I, I, I wonder if... That crime hadn't happened if 
the dude that they they busted up hadn't killed the Colombian citizen, would he even have been caught with this Haitian citizen that he had kidnapped? I don't think so. And, and you know, it's not news that there are police officers involved in kidnapping and such. But let me show you. It's not just police officers involved. Oh, wow. Did this just mess up my... Uh, I hope we're still recording. My screensaver just came on. Okay, so it's not just police officers involved with gangs. Now, let's let's take a look at this this article right here. I got into it with this lady here, Jennifer Hawk, who wrote this this article about fake news has real consequences in Haiti. You know, and and this also has to do with that whole NGO state that I'm talking about. Let me let me just give you guys the story the 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 story in short. Basically this this pastor right here uh his name is Rick Frechette. Uh he runs a hospital, yeah, pediatric hospital, but either way, every once in a while he uh has to bury bodies. And they've been doing it for a while. There's been articles about it. Uh, they bury bodies. And what happened is he was, they were out at a cemetery to bury bodies, but then they say the radio station said they were burying people from the protests. Or they, you know, either way, the people, the, 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 yeah, the radio station said they were burying people from the protests. And the people got all mad and came out there and were trying to uh, raise, you know, raising hell, giving these guys a hard time. And they were about to be attacked, but then a gang member came, a gang member came with guns and stuff and scared off all those. They And they set on fire the, the population that came to... Uh, attack well i won't even say attack to stop these guys that were burying the bodies the population that came to stop them that ran off when the gang members came down they the gang members set their their motorcycles and vehicles on fire all right and that's the story and i got into an argument with this lady because you know First of all, let, let, let's just get, I'm going to, I mean, I think it's a whole nother story for me to talk about what, to talk about what my views are on it. Like, it's, um, you know, like, because cause I have a issue with the whole, you know, them burying these bodies, you know, because... What they're trying to say is that, you know, we hate the, the Haitian parents or their family members have abandoned the bodies. That's what they want to say. They abandon them because it costs too much to bury the family member. But that doesn't make sense to me because somehow this guy's able to afford it, but he can't give it to the family members. And and and, and then again, it's like, you know. Haiti, we, we haven't really had major funeral expensive services that we've had to deal with, with for a long time. But yet, you know, even in our humble state, we've managed to not have the plague as they had in England. We managed to not have cholera unless it was introduced by the United Nations. All the diseases that you see in Asia, that you see in other countries, Haiti hasn't had. And usually when those diseases even come to those other countries, they're usually brought in by foreigners. So I, I, I fail to understand the whole issue of why they don't give these bodies to the family, the bird. I feel like there's something there. But you know, for this lady that wrote this article that I got that I got into it with in the in the in the comments, she's like, "Oh, they just abandoned the 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 bodies, and this poor pastor has to bury them, and they're covered with maggots." And yo, like, get out of here. It, it's see, 
Senator Nanel Cassie, the other day, he said that the U.S. ambassador and company, they operate, they, 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 they behave like racists. They have racist behaviors. And, you know, it was a little, it was a strong comment. But, you know, in Haiti, the understanding of racism, the understanding of white supremacy isn't as developed as it is for us here in the United States or who have grown up in the United States. What Senator Cassie was actually describing was bigotry. And that's what we have here for this lady. She just accepts, oh, yeah, the family members abandon the bodies. And that's why she just accepts that as truth. Because that's how she thinks Haitians are. That's, that's her mindset of Haitians. And it speaks to the mindset of the entire NGO state. Because they think they're coming there to help a people who can't help themselves. That's what, that's what they think they're there to do. That's their mindset. And they think they know better. They think they can, but we can't. And it's a mindset that permeates into a bunch of different things that end up being detrimental to the Haitian and beneficial to them. And it only begins and, and, and it grows into a, a, to me, it does start to develop into a, a certain uh white supremacist complex that they probably don't even because because let me tell you something i do believe a lot of them you know have good intentions to do good but i feel like after a while they become corrupt you know and, and this is actually my second time recording it my first recording is i, I was a lot more nicer Saying, you know, well, they don't know any better. But no, I, I do believe they, they should know better. Because you can't call yourself in Haiti trying to help, but then you can't say anything about the corrupt government. I think after one year of being in the country, two years being in the country, if you can't join in the solidarity of the movement in the streets to change the system, but you're still doing what you're doing, you are corrupt. You are part of the problem, in fact. I can't give you that benefit of the doubt. And I'm all off track because what I was supposed to talk about this situation was uh, was regarding the NGO state in Haiti and the mindset that they have in Haiti. And that's what they, the, the U.S. ambassador, the U.N., the EU, Canada, that's what they're in Haiti protecting through Jovenel Moise. And that's why they putting the batter in, the, in, in his back. Because see. If Haiti does get its act together. They become unnecessary. Guys like. Father. At least for what he's doing now. For what he's getting donations for. Or, or government money for. Or whatever he types of you know feelings he get, and, and I don't even not mean to knock him because I don't know he probably is a nice guy, but I'm gonna stick to my convictions and feelings, which is that if you in Haiti that long and you ain't protesting against it, then you 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 are corrupt and now part of the problem. But um, yeah, that's what they're trying to. Put. So so what these governments get is not only do they get. Like I said in my video about the humanitarian aid, humanitarian aid is a stimulus for these economies. Rather than having to put, you know, 10 million, you know, into people's pockets, which is which is not usually what they want to do when they want to stimulate the economy. Rather, they want to get put the money into like food stamps or something like that. They could do that in Haiti and not have to feel the 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 pain of undermining their own economy rather they undermine Haiti's economy. So not only they get they get they they got a whole workforce in Haiti. 
And not only do they get that whole little stimulus that they get to have by having a whole workforce in Haiti that still pays taxes to the United States. They also get to get a vote like Jovenel Moise voting for military action in Venezuela. They also get the political benefits of having a country that's basically on its knees. It's a win-win. And that's the system. And, that, and that's, the, that's the third chain I'm trying to make you guys see, which is the NGO state. Because while all these movements and stuff are going on, these protests, these barricades and stuff, you know, I've had the benefit to be in some of these groups. Uh, the And they're secret groups that these NGO people have, right? And in these groups, you know, you watch them and they're talking about ways to get around the barricades. They're... They're talking about how inconvenienced they are by the protests. When they hear that the police are, are lifting up a barricade, it's thumbs ups and likes and hearts. And, and just like in this article, they're talking about a radio station that is loved by the Haitian people for the work that they're doing. And that's who they're attacking in this article. So, for some reason, they are on the opposite side of trying to change the system. Even if they still, even if you want to believe that the people that are NGOs in Haiti have their hearts in the right place, their actions are undermining the move to change the system, to overturn this system and change it for the betterment of the people. That's what their actions are. Because, and I've seen it. And they and it's in this article too. Like in this article here, she trashes the radio station. She trashes the people that are protesting against the government because they want to go after this guy because they think he's burying bodies from the protests that they're having. And then she turns it up for for uh, gang members. This gang leader T. U. Gun came and, and and saved them from being attacked blew a hole through the gas tanks of the 20 or so motorcycles and threw a match on each as the precious and rare, you know, became fuel for the, you know, they're lauding the work of a, of a, of a local area gang leader and his gang in chasing away these, these people, a gang leader who likely kidnaps Jaspoa who comes into Haiti, who robs his own people, who kills and who is, definitely empowered by the government what they probably tried to do is call the police couldn't get the police there so the police called their other friends which are the gang members so i'm trying to help you guys see that this whole ngo state is a problem in haiti it's and it's costing us there's a actual monetary loss here what i'm saying is not popular y'all it's not going to be popular you know, this is very, very, very serious talk that I'm giving y'all here. So to the opposition, like I never, I never, I never, um, I never criticize without giving solutions. And, and so, so now I've, I've, I've criticized, I've told you guys why the president won't resign. I've told you guys about the NGO state and, I, and the fight to change the system. And while I add to that, you know, it, it's some Haitians that kind of uh, that 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 are. This is the president's uh, press conference. I actually couldn't even watch it, you know. But there's there, there's Haitians like this this young lady right here. Whatever I don't know how to say her last name, but I, it seems like and Tim or something like that, Christine and Tim. But you know. Because I, I told I told one of those NGO people, I said if I was in Haiti, I would I would not I would keep my son from going to school as well and I wouldn't be mad about it because I understand what the fight is about. And I think that's that and, and most Haitian parents in Haiti understand that. 
and are down with keeping their kids from school because the system is so corrupt. Because all you're getting now is when your kids graduate, they're going to be playing dominoes in the corner. That's, that's what you're getting with this system. And maybe they might get lucky enough to go work for an NGO and do more undermining of their own people or get into politics and then be corrupt. And that, and that will be, that's supposed to be something to be proud about. What, there, there's a system be overthrown. And I posted two articles today and I don't know why this thing's not coming up. I posted two articles today. Uh, yeah, they're not coming up. I, I, I'm going to go find them on the Sentinel. I posted two articles today. And, you know, it's about another one of our brothers who's on um, YouTube. His name's C. Junti. He has a... It's a channel about doing business in Haiti. I'm about to pull it up right here. And then... The other young lady I just showed you guys, which is uh, Christine and Tim, I think, how you say it, this brother right here. Like, I don't knock what they doing. And even even with that hater, um, Davidson Tucson, I don't, I understand what they doing. And I'm never going to knock what, what my Haitian brothers and sisters are trying to do for the country, you know, but I I I I do kind of you know trip because they they're missing the big picture. They're missing the big picture, which is there is a system that's that's gonna make what they're trying to do uh, difficult to impossible even, and quite risky at the end of the day. Like the brothers with Bunge, the incubator, and and I like the the idea that they have, but. Yeah, in a, you can't. I, I'm not mad at the protesters, which destroyed that. All. I'm not. I'm just not, cause I, cause you, it, you, you're in a country where the disparity is extreme. It's, 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 it's. Um, what's the word for disgusting? It, the disparity is, is that bad. It's, it's disgusting. It's abject. It's you cannot. You can you shouldn't ignore it, and and you never say anything about it. And if you had said anything about it, if the people felt like you were out there actually fighting for their situation to change, and not on some, you know, this is my Haiti, my Haiti's different, I T Palm different, like you know that hater Davidson too, something be trying to say. You know, it wouldn't be like that. I don't think they. I I think I don't think. They would have attacked your business, taking your stuff because it's, they don't they don't feel you, you know. And and and, I, and yeah, that's just how I feel about it, man. Like I, I but I I, I, and I but I want to see these two actually have some real opp opportunities for their ideas to grow because I could imagine if the system were different, a Haiti Tech Summit would blow up every year. If the system were different, if people could trust that, if they invest money in a business in Haiti to open up, whether it's a call center or whether it's a, 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 a server, a server farm or for, for computer servers and such. If they could trust that, you know, there's going to be an infrastructure there, that there's going to be security there and, and stuff. She would be bring. she would be part of something, you know incredible worldwide like she'd be a straight up mogul but nah you're gonna be riding on three wheels dealing with the situation with the system that we have here and same thing for my brother Chris you know he, he's he's on his entrepreneur business stuff um I think in the article they said he has a degree in economics there's a brother that could really really help the country with the knowledge that he has and with the drive that he has but it won't work in the broken system that we have. And I do. And, you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to stay with uh, what they're doing. But I wish the, they would understand the fight that we really have, which is to change the system first. You know, I want to see them empowered the right way because they, this is talent. 
this is the, this is the type of talent that we have an opportunity that we're seeing coming back to the country, but the situation is not there for them to be. It's not. It's just not conducive for them to be fruitful. So, uh, coming back to the solution, though, the opposition. Hopefully, they're listening. Sometimes I do think they're listening because uh, I spoke about the death toll. I wrote about the death toll and now, you know, everybody's really beginning to understand and take account that we're losing lives out here in these protests. These The Haitian police are really uh, attacking. So hopefully they listen to this advice that I'm about to give here. My advice is to make things very uncomfortable for individuals like uh, Father uh, Frechette here. You know, and I'm not saying go and hurt anybody. <laughs> I don't think y'all gonna do it anyways. Man, he's just scared to mess with these blunt, dog. But yeah, uh, maybe a sit-in at his church or hospital, whatever it is. Yeah, at wherever you see these these uh, NGOs at, you got to make it very uncomfortable for them. Because I guarantee you, if they start hightailing it out of the country, the international community, the ambassador and stuff, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna quit being in Jovenel Moe's ear, making them think. Because trust me, as long as you guys aren't, uh, until, until there's a massacre where hundreds, maybe even thousands, I don't even think they take hundreds, thousands of Haitian lives, are being lost may and even then you won't even get control because they're going to come in and take control so if there's a massacre maybe something might change but the system won't because they're going to come and take control and make sure they maintain the system if there's a so so that's the only way we've already lost 22 haitian lives but imagine and, and no i don't even want to say imagine in the sense that I'm encouraging this. But if one of these white folks' lives was lost, yo, trust me, hell and mountains and all that stuff would have been moved to, to rectify the situation. You see they, they, they found a kidnapping ring because somebody shot a Colombian citizen. So I'm not even uh, supporting violence. I'm saying just make things uncomfortable for these folks. Because that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to start writing about this $600 million. I want their fam. You know, I wrote an article the other day about the the government's henchman, Wozman Jean. I like to clown on him. He's a comedian. Some people try to take him seriously, but Wozman Jean, he's calling for a civil war. And, and that article was getting mad traffic. It was moving. And I was like, dang, yo. That's what's up. So I go and I check to see who's sharing it. Where what's the stuff? It's a bunch of white folks in out in Midwest United States talking about. You know, I got family out there with this missionary, with this, with this missionary service, with this NGO. Oh, please pray for them that they be safe. Yo, make things uncomfortable for these people in Haiti. So that their family back home understands that Haitians don't want you here. You know, and, and I and I actually my first version of this, before I realized the audio wasn't recording, I said, you know, it, if all the NGOs were to go, I think that would be too much for Haitians. Maybe there needs to be a gradual decline. No. You know, like um I used to smoke cigars and, and, and black and miles and all that stuff, right? Tried quitting a million times, man, like using patches, uh, you know, lowering the dosage, taking uh, using the Nicorette gum. I didn't really quit until I just did it cold turkey. I had to quit it cold turkey. And that's what the NGO situation is. It's a drug. Got to got to got to cut it. Cut it now. Six hundred million. In tax revenue loss And that doesn't even account for what it does to the economy What that kind of damage And I'm not talking about the tax revenue loss But what 
the imports because this is money lost in customs taxes. This is money lost in sales taxes. This is money lost in property taxes because the NGOs don't have to pay for property. Uh, lost in travel uh, taxes. That that That's the type of revenue we're losing here. And that doesn't even account for the compound effect of all of, of what those things cost. And if there's actually smuggling and, and whatnot going on, which I, I, I believe there is anyway. So we're, we're not naive here. Um, but yeah, gotta, gotta, gotta cut it out. Make it very uncomfortable. If, if the, this ain't popular, man, this ain't popular. Your boy don't play. I, I'm I'm out here preaching the truth to y'all. But if the opposition wants to see Moise go, they need to hold the streets. But they need to make it very uncomfortable for this NGO state that's in Haiti. Because this NGO state is undermining their movement. I, I'm telling you what's going on in the groups and stuff. They are undermining and... They're working with gangs and police and they're not and they have nothing to say about the corruption in the government. That's 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 maintaining this system. So if they want to see Jovenel Moise come, they need to make it very uncomfortable for these NGOs to operate in Haiti. And people ain't gonna like it. I don't know if they're gonna ban me off of Facebook or off of <laughs> YouTube or whatever. You know, we'll see. But um, I think that's all I have to say for the day, man. Um, yeah, there's actually more I had to say, but I think we're getting close to an hour. So I'm going to just say goodbye, you guys. Uh, I will try to talk to you guys more, but um, I, I'm working on two apps. I'm coding up two apps that are really going to be insane that y'all going to love. Um, it's going to help with revenue. To 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 have more money to put into the Haiti Sentinel, there there are more fun apps. Um, of course, uh, please join Change Haiti on Facebook. That's where we're gonna actually do get on the ground and make things happen. Cause you know I want the folks in Haiti to be able to do it, but I do think it's gonna take the us Jasper, us young people, um, to actually really really get in there and put our hands in to uh in, in, in forming policy in Haiti and bringing about legislation in Haiti and that's what change Haiti is about so it's facebook.com slash change Haiti um so definitely join that I'm on uh Twitter mighty six foot five max six it's m-i-g-h-t-y the number six FT, that's a uh, Foxtrot Tango, number five, uh, and Max M A X, Mike Alpha X Ray, Mighty Six Foot Five Max on Twitter. I'm that on on Instagram too, but I don't let everybody on my Instagram. But you could try. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I love you all, man. I really do. Um, Hope everybody's doing well, man. Look forward. We, 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 you know, it's a, it's a long battle, but I'm in it, and I don't think I could lose. So, all right, goodbye, y'all.